Hi friends, my name is Robin. I'm known in the creative community as Crafty Planner Queen. And today's video is in collaboration with Archer and Olive, one of my favorite brands, my go-to for all things journal. And what I really, really love about Archer and Olive is their dedication to mental health. Not just this month, the month of May, that's Mental Health Awareness Month, but every single day with every single purchase, you can feel that they care about how you feel. And so I was really excited when they reached out to say, let's do another collaboration about mental health. Journaling is something that I am extremely passionate about, guys. Um, in addition to being a mental health therapist, I am a journal enthusiast. And I use journaling, daily journaling, as one of my coping skills. And I like to share it with everyone because I really do believe that daily journaling, journaling during the hard times, memory keeping during the good times with a journal is really, really essential to overall mental health and mental well-being. With that being said, I'm going to share today a couple prompts with you that I think will be really, really helpful um, when dealing with hard things as well as trying to navigate a schedule and just some tips about how to keep a journal to be consistent to make it your emotional safe space, okay? Okay, friends, before we get into the specifics about journal prompts and what types of prompts that we should um, look towards for mental health and mental wellness. Let's talk a little bit about why journaling is so important in the first place. What does it do for us, right? And how many different types of journaling can you do? There are lots. And I'm going to talk about some of the ones that I personally have used and I find them to be really, really healing, especially if you are a person that likes to, you know, be on the creative side. Um, one of them is uh, like mixed media or art journal pages. I find these to be extremely healing for people because instead of words, because not everyone likes to write, so we do want to acknowledge that, instead of words, you can have still have prompts, like you can have the word sadness or the word anxious or the word overjoyed or pride or whatever the word may be, and then you could use your journal as a palette to write the story without writing, right? You could take your art crayons and your mixed media and ephemera and your stationery, and you could do those types of things. That's something I really like to do. Just kind of put on some music, zone out, and just make an art journal page. For those of you who just really can't get in the routine of writing, it's just something about it you can't connect to, art journaling, junk journaling, um, mixed media may be great for you, okay? Then you have some people that like to fill the page. You may just get into your zone, put your timer on for five or 10 minutes, or just kind of don't put a timer on and just let yourself just freely flow and write out all the things. Uh, you have creative journalists who like to put a couple little embellishments on the page to get them excited about journaling. I also really like that. You have gratitude journaling, and we're gonna talk a bit about gratitude as we go deeper into the prompts. Uh, gratitude journaling is one of my favorite things that I would suggest for someone who's dealing with depression because when we focus on what we're grateful for, we take less focus off of the things that make us feel down or, you know, those dark days. Even now, darkest days, there's always a glimmer of light. That's kind of the thinking around gratitude. So there are so many different ways. Um, if you're a person of faith, you can do faith journaling. Bible journaling is really, really popular in the community. Whatever type of journal makes you feel whole, gives you a release, then that's what you, you know, you'll be drawn towards. For me, of course, Archer and Olive is my go-to. I have all types of Archer and Olive journals. This is one of my newest ones. The reason why I love Archer and Olive is because, first of all, the durability and the thickness of the pages. So if you wanted to use paint or art crayons, you totally can. The pages are really thick. There are all types of covers, all types of sizes, and all types of styles. So if you um, like something you can slip in your purse, this A5 size will be perfect. If you have really big handwriting or you just want to be a little bit more free, you can get a B6. So there are many, many different ways, okay? We're going to now talk a little bit uh, more specific about the types of journal prompts that you could do for mental health. Just a few. There are dozens, there are probably hundreds that you can do, but I'm going to talk about some that I think are really, really help us to zone in when it comes to mental health, as well as how we can use our journals for things such as setting boundaries, which I see in the community, in the creative community, I've, I've heard a lot of people say how difficult it is to set boundaries with friends, with colleagues, with collaborators, with brands, so we're going to talk about that as well. 
Okay, friends, so this segment of the video, we're going to go into some journal prompts that can help you when you're trying to create a safe space for yourself, as well as create boundaries. Boundaries are hard, right? But we need them for ourselves and we need them for others so we don't get mental exhaustion, which leads to mental breakdown, okay? So our very first prompt, this is where you can jot down and um, do these prompts whenever you see fit for yourself. But our first prompt is going to be, what are my personal triggers for anxiety? What are my personal triggers for anxiety? And if you are a person um, that is fortunate enough to have never dealt with anxiety, you can do what are my triggers for being overwhelmed? Because I think we've all dealt with being overwhelmed before. So what triggers me? What makes me feel this way? Okay. And why this one is really important is because once we have, so I have this um, term that I always like to use when I'm providing therapy and I say, know your triggers, right? Control your gun. If you know your triggers, then you know when to shoot and when not to shoot. You know when you need to take space and when you're okay to communicate how you feel. So writing down those triggers of what makes me anxious, what makes me overwhelmed, then we know a little, we can start to learn or map out for ourselves how we can avoid those things because the overall goal is that we want to feel better. We want to feel calm. We want to feel a baseline. To follow up with our first prompt, I'm going to give you guys a mental health technique called grounding. Uh, you can look up grounding and what it is, but really going outside, putting your feet into the bare earth or sitting on the ground and taking in all the smells and sounds around you, using your senses, which you can smell, taste, feel, hear, and see in the present moment to bring yourself into awareness and mindfulness this is something that is very very um useful if you are a person that deals with anxiety or just feeling really overwhelmed and really stressed grounding yourself can be really important so you can use that along with that journal entry you can do that journal prompt while grounding simultaneously okay this next journal prompt is so simple yet so profound and it's simply what activities can I do that lift my mood the most? Or what activities do I do currently that lift my mood the most? So for me, it's really simple. It's when I'm in my happy place, my office, crafting, planning, and journaling. Those are the things that allow me to get centered to who I really am without anyone needing me without pouring into anyone else, just simply pouring into myself. So for you, you ponder on those things, what activities lift my mood the most, but at the same time, you are now offering yourself and you are now showing yourself on paper your coping skills. Those will be your go-to coping skills. You can always add to it, but the things you write on that list, whether it's gardening or cooking or being outdoors or hiking or listening to music, whatever you have on that list, you now have something to put into your toolbox when you need to fix your mood, when you need to lift your mental health. So there's that one. I also want to take a moment here to pause and to just engage you in a reflection. And that reflection is what is keeping me from being committed to my journaling journey? If there's anything, what is it? And now that you are aware of it, how are you going to fix it moving forward? That's not a prompt. That's just a mental reflection. Am I ready and prepared and equipped to commit to my journaling journey just to see what the outcome could be, to see if it really makes me feel lighter mentally? And if I'm not, that's a great reflection because then I can think about why. Okay? So our last prompt, and then I'm going to give you information on how you can continue to get great uh, mental health tips and lots of journaling tips um, in the future from the Archer and Olive brand. Okay, friends, to wrap up our segment on mental health and journaling, I want to share one more prompt with you. And that prompt is, what are three boundaries that I need to set to make myself feel more emotionally safe? And just to give you examples, it could be something as simple as I used to carpool with the other moms for practice for my kid. But now I realize that it is taxing on me and I need to find a way to gently come out of it. Okay. And I always say journaling allows us to have practice conversations for the hard things. You can literally write down what you want to say, how you want the other party to feel once it's said, and how you want to feel. Okay. So you're going to work on three of those boundaries 
boundaries, whether it's saying no, whether it's taking something off your plate that's too much, um, even if you were, say you were already previously in an engagement or in a collaboration or in a contract, but now it's not working for you anymore and you need to set the boundary or you were over committing your time and now you need to scale back. Those are some of the things that we do that make ourselves feel emotionally safe, that take some of the stress and anxiety and worry off of us, okay? So... I encourage you to use some of these prompts. I hope that you have found something helpful in this video that you can use in your journaling journey. It is very rewarding. It is something I'm practicing what I preach. It's something that I use every single day. I use that tool of journaling because it truly is powerful. I also wanted to add there are some people that have expressed not feeling emotional safety with writing down very personal things because of fear of invasion of privacy. But we don't want to make any excuses for ourselves. You can get yourself a lockbox or a small safe and put your journal there if you don't feel like it would be safe or someone in your house may intentionally or unintentionally invade that privacy, okay? Because journaling is a safe space and it's just for you. So I hope that you found something that you liked here. I hope that you will like and share and comment on this video. Maybe share it with a friend. Write down some tips. You can rewatch it again later. Don't forget to subscribe to Archer and Olive's YouTube as well as hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. There is lots of lots of good things there that they have to offer. I am Robin on all platforms as Crafty Planner Queen. It's been my joy to share my passion of journaling and mental health with you. And until next time, guys, happy journaling and happy healing. Bye.